All right, so you're logged into the website, you have your account, and you're now ready to create your first to scratch project. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the Create button here next to the Scratch logo. And when you click on that, it's going to load the editor. And this is what you will use to create all of your Scratch projects. So let's talk a little bit about the layout here. Over here, you'll see a screen with a cat on it. This is the output screen. This is where all the action happens. So everything that you create will show up over here on the output screen. So when we learn how to make this cat move around the screen, it's going to move around over here. Just below that is a section called Sprites. And this is where all of your sprites will be located. And your sprites will have scripts attached to them, which we'll talk about in a second. But you can have as many sprites as you want. And sprites are another sort of fancy computery word for characters. Uh, so we're going to have, you can have as many characters or sprites as you want in your uh, Scratch program that you write. So those are down here. And we'll talk more about those in a minute. In the middle are the blocks uh, which you use to create your program. So these are all the different kinds of blocks that you can use. And it starts out in motion, but there are looks, sound, pen, data, events, controls, sensing, operators, and we can even make our own blocks. So we're going to learn about a lot of these. Um, but there, you'll notice that they're all color-coded, so your events are sort of a dark orange, your control is a slightly lighter, motion is blue, so that's very helpful. Over here in this big area, um, which you can actually make bigger or smaller using these little tools over here, is where you're going to drag your blocks to make your sprite move around or have a different costume or whatever that might be. So this is where all the action is going to happen in terms of building our programs. So we're going to start by first of all learning how to give ourselves a new sprite um, because the default cat while he's cute a lot of people um, don't necessarily want to work with him the whole time. So there are two main ways that you can make a sprite that we're going to talk about right now uh, or use a sprite. There are lots of sprites in the library that Scratch provides you and you can also create a sprite. There are two other ways you can have sprites and one is to upload one from a file if you want to make your own in a drawing program or from a, a, something you've downloaded from the web or you can take a picture of yourself if you have a camera on your computer but we're going to stick with these first two the choosing the sprite from the library and or painting a new sprite. So let's start by picking a new sprite to replace our cat sprite. And when you click on that icon, you get a whole bunch of options. And you'll notice over here that there are different categories or themes that you can use. So if we want, for example, maybe space creatures, let's take this cute little space creature. So if you double click on that, our little space creature shows up. Well now that we have our space creature we don't want our cat anymore so what you can do is click on your cat down here and right click on him and then delete and he will go away. So let's focus on our little space creature here. Her name is Giga. All right, so we want to move our space creature around. So there are a couple things that we need to do. So we're in our motion blocks right now, you can see. But we need to get things started. So we're going to go to events. And I'm going to choose this when the flag is clicked. So when the flag is clicked, and you might see that there is a green flag up here on our output screen. So that's how everything gets started we're going to have something happen when the flag is clicked. In this case, we're just going to move our little space creature across the screen. So there are several different ways you can move. You can move in steps. You can change your x-coordinate 
for your Y coordinate separately. You can change those together and you can also glide. So that's five different ways that you can move just in a straight line. So let's start with just the simple steps. So if we move 10 steps, that's actually not very much. So I'm gonna actually change this to 50. So all of these where you see a little white circle are editable. I'm gonna click the green flag and you will see our little space creature move across the screen. And you'll see that she's about to go off of the screen. So if we wanted to move her back the other way, we just need to make our steps a negative number. And she will go back the other way. Voila. So steps are pretty simple. Moving 50 steps or so at a time. Changing X is very similar. So you might remember from math that you have an X axis, which would go across the screen here in the middle, and a Y axis that goes up and down. Zero, zero is in the middle, and just like in math, positive goes to the right, and negative goes to the left. So if we change our X by a positive number of 50, Giga moves across the screen about the same amount as she did with her steps. And just like before, we can make this a negative number. And she will move to the left instead of to the right. So that's pretty cool. Now if we want her to move up and down instead of side to side, we're going to change our Y value. So she will go up and down the Y axis. Let's make this big enough to see. She goes up, up, and if we want to make her go down, just like with X, we will make that value a negative value, and she will go down. Okay, so those are three ways to move. Another way to move is just to go to a particular spot. And this is very common when you want to say, start your sprite or your character at a particular location. So let's say I want my sprite to start off in the exact middle of the screen. So I will put X and Y at zero, zero. So she will pop right back to the middle of the screen. Now if I want her to go somewhere else after that, like maybe a little bit further over to the left, and maybe down just a little bit. So she's going to start in the middle, but then she's going to move down. And you'll notice that I'm clicking the flag here and nothing's happening. In part that's because um, Right here, we go. it happens so fast that your eye can't actually see it. And we're going to fix that in just a minute after I show one more way to move across the screen. So glide, you'll notice that she hopped from one place to another. Glide makes it so she will go a little more smoothly. So if we want to move her from where she is now to the top right-hand corner, we're going to move her in a positive direction, and we're going to make this X number pretty big. If you'll notice over here, right here, there's X, Y coordinates right here. And those tell you the X, Y coordinates of your cursor. So right now I'm over the X and the Y, so that's giving me a value of about 179 and negative 180. If I move it up here to the top corner where I want to go, it says X222 and Y161. So I'm going to put those numbers over here into our glide block. So now when I click the flag, she should glide relatively quickly to the top of the screen. Now that was pretty fast. If I wanted her to go a little bit more slowly, I would change the timing. 
So I might have that take three seconds to get her from one place to another. And then she will glide a little more slowly. Okay, so those are the basic ways of moving. And now let's put all of these things together. So you remember when we had these two blocks together, you couldn't really see um, the movement. So under control, there's a block that's called a weight block, and that's really helpful for creating um, a visual, a pause between each of these movements so you can actually see her moving. So if you want something to look like it's jumping, for example, or dancing from side to side, you often have to put these weight things in the middle. So we put these weight blocks in between our movement blocks so that we can see what those look like. So we're going to start our sprite in the middle. We're going to wait a second. We're going to move her to the left 50 steps. Then we're going to move her to the left again by another 50 steps. We're going to wait. We're going to have her go to this location on the screen. We're going to wait again, and then we're going to move her down the screen a little bit, and we're going to wait again, and then we're going to glide her up into the top right-hand corner. So let's see what that looks like. There we go. It sort of looks like she's dancing around the screen. So you can put a bunch of these together, and then it looks like your sprite is jiggling all over the screen. So those are your basic sprite movements. So we learned how to use the flag when the flag is clicked. We learned how to use some of our motion blocks, steps, changing X, changing Y, changing both X and Y at the same time, and we learned how to glide. One last thing I want to show you, and that's how to save your files. So if you go up to File, there's a Save Now. Now it does save a little bit as you go, but it doesn't necessarily save um, everything up to the point where it last saved in the end. So you want to make sure that you click Save. Here's where you can change the name of your file, and then that will ensure that you can um, access it from home or wherever wherever you want to go and in fact if you go to my stuff you will see a list of all the projects that you s saved and once we get um, started with really making a lot of projects we're also going to learn about the share button you are more than welcome to experiment with that on your own